Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to the second pair of series from Losers Round 1 of the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. I am Shadow 363, your host, and we are going to start out with a match between Electro and... Sh we're going to start with the, between a match between Electro and Sharadon. I apologize for the issues inherent in live broadcasting. Please forgive me. I had this set up, and it went away on me. I believe this may be a bug with OBS. But now we are solid. So, anyway, ignoring that small glitch. Electro vs. Sharadon, Group P. That is the first series we're going to be watching tonight. And after that, it's going to be Haiku vs. Shadow Fury CC3. We'll see how that goes. But first, Electro vs. Sharadon is going to be on Cataclysm Ridge, and it's going to be what we're watching right now. Electro starting out in the southwest corner of the map. Sharadon in the northeast corner immediately choosing Vekir. Electro has not chosen his species yet. I th think he was playing CISO. Nope, he's playing Vekir. I was very wrong. So, Vekir Mirror. This on Cataclysm Ridge will be interesting. Vekir on Cataclysm Ridge can be heavily dependent on infantry, actually. they It's small enough that they can almost get away with it. But probably going to be based on vehicles, as Vekir normally is. Early Zion Pulsers. I'm curious to see if people will go for Zion Turchers, because Zion Pulsers do not deal a whole lot of damage to Zion Turchers. Zion Turchers actually don't take a lot of damage from artillery. Period. It's Cloaking units don't take a whole lot of damage from artillery, but as it stands, Zion Turcher is the only ground-based cloaking unit. The others are aerial, and therefore artillery can't hit them. Period. So, Zion Turcher is a bit of a direct counter to Zion Pulsers, but then, of course, so are pretty much any air unit. We'll see what the, unit, see what the players go for between the two options. My guess would be that Zion Turcher will come up. Because Zion Turchers actually have been coming up quite a bit for Vekir matches. We've seen in earlier games in this tournament the Zion Turchers are not unpopular. I would not be surprised if they popped up. Also, I found it interesting that both players are staying pretty far from the present. Both of them are fast forwarding, but it's. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. I find a lot of players. I'm not sure if that's a skill thing or what. I just I find it curious that they are hanging out near the Implable Pass since, of course, I always, always, always harp on macro near the present or into the future, and micro near the past, because Chrono Energy is a limited resource. Very, very limited. As I find out the hard way all the time, whenever I play. And it looks like some scouting by Sharadan. Seeing that Electro has gone Vekir, and Electro has found the same about Sharadan. Both players are fully aware of what the other one's doing, and therefore, no real surprises for what's going to happen next. Or at least... So I'd assume. It depends on how well the players are aware of what they can do with Vekir. I'm sure Electro has some knowledge of this. He does a lot of... He has done a lot of analysis on the way the game has played out. And 130 mark... Yeah, this is this is correct. The one 130 mark, he is building a depot. I... Well, that is that is a rush. I mean, admittedly, this is Cataclysm Ridge. And in case you haven't watched this set of... I haven't watched my casts in a while, this used to be called Hills. And Sharon actually pointed that out in the chat. Is, oh, this is Hills. Yes, I didn't think Hills was a very good name. I never thought it was a good name. And so I renamed it Cataclysm Ridge. But it's important to note that both maps, regardless of the name, are very small and pretty prone to rushing. So Electro definitely playing to that part of the map. On the other hand, Sharon, he is about a minute up from there, has a slightly healthier economy, though only five LCRPs, not six, as we saw when we saw earlier, yes, no, Tuesday it was, the games in Cataclysm Ridge that had Vekir in them, six RPs on Liquid Crystal was kind of normal even then, especially in, say, Tomb of Heroes, especially normal then, but even Cataclysm Ridge, we did see that. But Electro, very cl clearly going for a rush. Shardon looks like he may be trying to respond to that, has not built a depot yet, he could build a depot, and he is jumping back, possibly to make sure that he actually orders the depot when he can, when he can actually afford it. Also, why is he setting up some scouts? Has his Teth Viewer at the back. Still kind of drawing attention to himself. He is going in, wanting to see exactly what Electro's up to. Good idea, because of course, players can just go back and change whatever they want. So, you want to make sure you have up-to-date information about what your opponent is doing. Shin Viewer, also kind of wise to have it here in case Electro goes towards the north. Although, given that Electro is playing back here, he probably will just skip teleport everything in. He might walk the units in, but... I don't know. If you're going for a fast rush like this, skip teleporting in seems like what you do. The only downside, of course, is that skip teleport 
requires that you actually go through the effort of researching Skip Teleport, which, well, per unit, which takes time and takes resources, so I don't know if he's going to actually go through with that. On a map like this, actually walking the units, compared to the... Compared to the time it takes to get Skip Teleport and charge up Teleportation, I think is still slower. I think Overgrown Citadel is about the, the point where they're equal, but I would have to actually experiment with that. I'd be curious if someone, if someone throws in the chat whether or not it actually is equally fast to go to Skip Teleport or just to drive the unit straight in. I would be interested to know, but I kind of doubt it, partly because of the way the map is laid out. Rush distances are artificially, inf well, artificially, they're inflated for ground units compared to air units and compared to teleporting. Teleporting is just a shorter distance to travel than going up and then down and then up or going through the back door. Even going through the back door and up, it's still probably, it's still longer than it appears. And the Zion Pulsars are up. They have not gotten Skip Teleport yet. Electro has not yet researched that. And there we go. He is going for Skip Teleport. He is deciding that it is going to be faster that way. Shardon, on the other hand, has his own Zion Pulsars being built. He is about 30 seconds up, however, so that means that Electro, he'll get Skip Teleport around the time that the Depot completes from the looks of it. And Electro's actually jumped back to the three minute mark. He's at this point not got his Zion Pulsars, but where Shardon is, the Zion Pulsars will exist once the time wave comes along and propagates them. Right now, that information is not updated. Shardon not aware of this. He is, however, choosing to drive his units in rather than Skip Teleport, being that is the five minute mark and he was not going for a rush build. Not surprising. But yeah, with Electro, it is more expected that he would go for Skip Teleport. Now let's see, from his point of view, he is getting Skip Teleport on one of them. Cannot afford it on the other two. As we can see, he is rather distressed by this. Noticing that he cannot actually afford all the Skip Teleport that he wants. Of course, if he teleports back to the RPs, actually even if he teleports back to the RPs, this is why I was a little bit concerned about Skip Teleport, because part of the time is getting the money. You have to actually pay for Skip Teleport, which means you have to resources for Skip Teleport, which means, of course, that... You need to actually make sure you have that. So it looks like Electro is attempting to remedy this. Three LCRPs, one QPRP. Should be able to get two Skip Teleports, or Skip Teleport capable Zion Pulsars within the next 10 seconds or so, 20 seconds or so maybe. You can afford another one right now, and... No, apparently he just used that money to build another Zion Pulsar. Now we can afford Skip Teleport again. Or, there we go. Looks like he may, may not be going for that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised this game just became Zion Pulsar Wars for the first, the next five minutes or so, just, or at least next three or four minutes. Just because Sharadon's about to attack. Admittedly, he is further in the future, but he's gone heavy Zion Pulsar. Electro has gone pretty heavy Zion Pulsar as well with the intent to rush. But I think Electro has lost the timing window because the resource, or because of the lack of resources. He built too many Zion Pulsars for the amount of skip teleport that he could get on them efficiently. At this point in time, the 441 mark, this is when... Chardon is building his first Zion Pulsars, and I'd say this is where Electro has lost his timing. The Iron is no longer hot. His best bet now is basically to attack when the Zion Pulsars are halfway down. So then Chardon really has to choose which way he's going to go with this. And that actually is possible. Looks like Electro does have enough skid teleport that he could pull that off. He could do exactly that. We'll see if he does, though. And Chardon, on the other hand, about two minutes up from here, he is prepping for an attack of his own at the 714 mark and has been for some time. Getting air units as well, so Chardon can easily counter this. Getting a Shinturcher two minutes in, Electro will need to attack basically now. And by now, I mean a chronally now, as in this exact minute, or possibly even 10 or 15 seconds earlier, is when he needs to attack. Because if he attacks at the six minute mark, it's too late. Shardon's units are already in place. If he attacks at the 530 mark, which is right now, if he skips over right now, right now, or actually he jumped forward a minute, so not right now, a minute ago. If he does that a minute ago, it looks like he actually has a bookmark planned out for exactly that purpose at the 530 mark. So it appears he is intending to do exactly that. Once he's in a position to do that, and the green time wave passes along so it doesn't get propagated immediately at three times speed, then Sharadon will be in a... He'll be in a position to counterattack. That is for sure. That is going to be the thing that Electro has to worry about. And I think Electro may lose this game as a result of this, but we'll see. Electro is setting up. He, The time wave has not quite crossed him yet. His bookmark is in the playable past. He can go for it. Actually, he should probably go for it a bit further than the past anyway. He can go for it, and he is not. Why is he not going for it? I There we go. Okay, six-minute mark. This is really risky, and Shardan could go for a counterattack. I think Shardan will go for a counterattack, and probably that will seal it. Now, this Shin Turtle came in at the seven-minute mark or so, which means Electro does have a bit of a chance. And Electro 
double checking some damage. I'm scouting in Shardan's base, but at the three minute mark where Electro or three thirty mark where Electro was looking, Shardan was not yet set up. Electro, on the other hand, well, he set off his attack. He's getting he's getting Teth pulsers. Correctly assuming there's going to be air units, but not thinking about these Zion pulsers. It would seem not building air units or Zion churches of his own, which means very likely that. He is entirely banking on this rush. I mean, obviously, that's how you do a hard rush like this. You have to bank on it. And he's very clearly doing so. And Shardan notices the rush happening, notices the Zion Pulsar coming in, and what is his response? Is he going to counterattack, or is he going to defend it? And he is going to counterattack. Of course, he's going to counterattack. Further in the future, actually, not that much further. Like I said, Electro's attack didn't hit that quickly, but the Aerial Control Center does go down before the Shin Pulse. Let's double check. The Shin Churcher has not been built yet. Nowhere on the map is there a Shin Churcher, so... Right now, Electro has taken out Shardan's infrastructure. Shardan is counterattacking, but cannot defend against this. Unfortunately, Electro can't defend against the Zion Pulsar coming from Shardan either. And that is a problem. Shardan needs to make sure that he actually has... Well, Shardan doesn't need to make sure he has anything. At this point, both players have basically destroyed each other's base, and neither one really has much to rebuild with, although Shardan does have a Shinbeer. I don't think Electro has his own Shinbeer on the map. I think Electro at this point is entirely banking on now getting, jumping back to defend his own base, possibly banking on this, and it looks like Shardan not actually here to defend. He, Electro, further in the past, Shardan looks like he's actually able to hold this off, or at least, sorry, Electro able to hold this off, Shardan not quite able to hold this off, but Shardan is rebuilding at the same time and has more Zion Pulsars coming in. The Annex still inside Shardan's base, and Electro has, still has his depot. He can build a foundation next to it in order to get around the fact that he has no way of easily building vehicles anymore. And he has the money to do so. 130 LC. He is... Electro is actually pretty solid right now. I think Electro... Oh! That is a problem. Electro jumping back into the main base to counterattack or to finish off his attack. Not considering... I mean, obviously not realizing the Shardons to the north. That is the one thing about Skip Teleport. You can't see where your opponent... If your opponent's set up in a proxy position easily unless you look for it. And Electro starting to rebuild, getting more foundations. Not a bad idea, but right now Electro... Looks like trying to hit Shardan right in the economy. Not a bad idea, and right now Shardan can't actually build any vehicles. He only has 13 Q Plasma. The cheapest one is the Zion Pulsar at 16 Q Plasma, so... Right now, Shardan is still a little bit behind. That being said, Electro... isn't pushing too hard. He needs to get an Annex up. He needs to get more Zion Pulsars up. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's getting an Annex up. He's getting Zion Pulsars up. And he is... or likely getting Zion Pulsars up. It's just he doesn't know about this base, and if he knew about this base, he probably would go to kill it. But he doesn't know about it, and that is Shardan's trump card right now. So, Shardan, from his point of view, he is trying to rebuild. He can't even build a depot at this point, by the way. He doesn't have the Q-Plasma, but he is rectifying that. He is getting Liquid Crystal RPs in order to more easily get Q-Plasma RPs, because he has no Liquid Crystal either, or very little. He's teleported some of his RPs away, and actually some of them onto Q-Plasma. So, at this point... The economic harassment is possibly helping Shardan. I mean, admittedly, it doesn't help him all that much. But let's see, is Electro following up on this? From his point of view, he has dealt some damage to the resource processors, but this is right before they teleport away, and they are about to teleport away, and that is exactly what they do. So Electro... He is jumping... Okay, he is teleporting north eventually. Further closer to the present, he is teleporting north. Right idea. It might be a little bit too late, though, when he does that, once the time waves come along and make everything kind of nice and accurate. But we'll see, Electro is jumping back to the Implable Past Edge, and it looks like... Is he... He is not teleporting his units away quite yet. He is... Well, he's building up an Annex. He has his base partially rebuilt. Actually, entirely rebuilt. In fact, this foundation's new. He could build an Aerial Control Center on it if he wanted to, and looks like at this point, that is not his intent. He is entirely intent on healing the depot first. Shardan, however, does have a depot, and Electro... Looks like he is at least somewhat aware of this base here, or at least suspicious of it, and has some design pulsers over. So, once again, there's the Implable Past Edge, or the... Im sorry, the, yeah, Implable Past Edge, that's right. And the right time of carrying it forward, so Electro's attack is coming through, and it looks like he's actually dealing a fair amount of damage. And nice use of the ridge here. Putting a Zion Pulsar, teleporting up right on the top of this ridge so he can attack with impunity. Keeping Shardan... Well, keeping Shardan from expanding too much, but the thing is, Shardan, on the other hand, still has a whole lot of power here. And he can actually get his, his Zion Pulsar still can see up the cliff, thanks to the Annex, I believe. Oh no, the Annex is just out of range. In fact, no, the Zion Pulsars cannot see up the cliff easily. That is going to be a problem for Shardan. However, Electro 
still is behind in terms of economy. Shroudan still has a stronger economy right now. It's just off to the side. It's off outside of his main base, but he still has it. And it looks like Zion Turcher has been built. Should point that out. Electro has built a Zion Turcher, and he is sending in Zion Pulsers. He is not sending in the Zion Turcher to attack, however. And these Zion Pulsers cannot really do too much. Two Zion Pulsers against three when the three are supported by their depot is not a particularly good battle to fight. And Electro knows this. He is avoiding that entirely, and he is Cloaking the Zion Turcher, he is going to send that in very shortly. Sending in another Zion Turcher as well. Good use of what counter system, what hard counter system there exists in Akron. Zion Turcher is coming in. It is cloaked, however, and the Zion Pulsers are taking all the heat. Not the Zion Turcher. This is one of those cases where I say Zion Turchers really should be uncloaked. Because uncloaked Zion Turchers operate as a great tank against Zion Pulsers. I mean, they operate as a great tank regardless for Zion Pulsers, but against Zion Pulsers, it's especially true. And it looks like one of them is, in fact, operating as a tank. And as it stands, Electro did lose his Zion Pulsers. That, that's not great. Looks like he might be trying to save them by teleporting. Yeah, he is exactly trying to do that, but unfortunately he cannot. Doesn't receive the order quite fast enough. So right now, Electro does actually have a pretty good position for dealing with these Zion Pulsers, except for the fact that... Okay, this Zion Turcher is not cloaked. That's good. This Zion Turcher may want to be cloaked, or may want to be uncloaked, I should say, just to spread out the damage a bit, but even then, this the Zion Turcher is healing enough from the Foundation. It's basically taking no damage, and I think this is kind of a stalemate situation. I mean, Electro has Depot Heal and Foundation, and... Uh, sorry, Shardon has Depot Heal Foundation. Electro has Foundation and basically a defense advantage, an armor advantage. Electro has... A bit of an advantage just in the fact that he does have a bit more of a solid base right now. He has an annex. He has the ability to continue building foundations fairly easily in all directions. Okay, it's pretty minor. But regardless, he does have more ability to expand. Well, Sheridan has just more economy overall. So at this point, if Sheridan is supposed... To, if he puts a foundation in the north, build an annex, that actually be really scary. But even then, it's just problematic. And at this point, Electro trying to break the stalemate by pushing more and more Zion Turchers in and really... The Zion Turchers can easily be countered here. Shardon actually is taking a fair amount of damage from these Zion Turchers. Sorry, yeah, from these Zion Turchers. Electro is pushing them very hard. No Shinveer around the map. That Shinveer looks like it got killed. Yeah, it got killed when the Zion Pulsers attacked earlier when they teleported onto the ridge. So no easy way for Shardon to rebuild. However, he does have a lot of foundations. And he has a fair amount of economy. He has a stronger economy than Electro does. And Electro... While he is able to take care of the Zion Pulsers without issues, yeah, just for the Zion Pulsers, but he can't easily get rid of the Foundations. Zion Turchers are pretty much his only, sorry, Zion Pulsers of his own are pretty much his only chance to get rid of these Foundations. At this point, though, it's kind of a stalemate. It looks like Sheridan has thrown in the towel, not willing to deal with this whole stalemate issue. And instead, just GG, realizing he guess he can't easily rebuild from here. Or maybe not, he is... Well, no, we'll see. He did say GG, that's... Like, really, when you say GG, just please mean it. But, yeah, it's... Oh, Electro pointing out he's actually fully aware of this base because he scouted in the present. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, Shardan throws in the towel. That is game one. So, be back shortly with game two between the two of them. And stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Akron fans, to Game 2 of Electro vs. Shardan. This is in the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament cast for losers round 1. And Electro won the first game, basically by doing slightly better in a stalemate. Although, he actually did a lot better in defense and during a base swap. That was pretty tense for both of them, though. Yeah, so congratulations for Game 1. Now we're on to Game 2. Can Shardan come back from this, or is Electro going to win 2-1 as a total shutout, as we actually have seen for the last... The last six series of this tournament I've casted have been total shutouts, 2-0 shutouts. So we'll see if this is any different. And we will see whether it's different on Desecrated Temple, my favorite map. Electro starting at the south side of the map, Shard on the north side, cross positions. Well, that's interesting. Should point out, of course, that this map is a four-player map. There are star positions at the west and east as well as north and south, but the players have been 
chosen to play in the north and south. So Electro is still choosing his species. Whether or not he'll play Vekir, we'll see. Shardan, however, is committed to Vekir. Although he's not committed to making all of his economy work, he's probably going to have to redo this. He is paused right now, so we will obviously see this RP go into a better position fairly shortly. Electro, on the other hand, is paused, possibly choosing his species. Not sure... Okay, CISO. You know, I suspect that Electro may be playing random. Electro is watching this, so I hope he lets me know if he was, in fact, playing random during this game, because... That'd be kind of interesting. The only player I knew who was playing random was Shalka, and he's out of the tournament now. So... We'll see. But Electro, I don't know if he's playing CISO for the sake of playing CISO, or playing CISO because the game chose for him to play CISO. He was appointed as the ambassador of CISO for this particular match. But no, apparently Electro cannot watch because apparently this game is so absolutely horrible. Is that a fair warning? I'm confused. Oh, Shardan also pointing out the crates change. No, actually the crates... This is not a tournament edition version of the map for crates change. I actually made this crate change happen a while ago. This windmill style is one that really minimizes the amount of resource processors that can be around a set of crates. Which is why I went for it. The rest of it, however, the way the main bases are structured is actually the way it's been since I made the map in the first place. Now, that aside, Shardan going very quickly for a foundation. Interesting choice. The two minimark he's going for a foundation. Oftentimes you don't see that until about the 3-minute mark or so, but he is getting... He does have a 6 LCRPs, so it's not entirely unusual. Now he's getting more QPRPs. This is more typical. Getting a couple of QPRPs first so that he can actually support vehicles out of the foundation, which typically takes about 3 minutes. Electro, on the other hand, what is he up to? He is further near the unplayable past, and... He's... Well, still building his first few RPs. Well, we'll get back to him when he's actually doing something. Anyway, Shardan is scouting out, making sure he knows what's around the other bases, and also keeping a Shin Viewer over here, just in case he wants to build up a nice little hidden base in one of the start positions that Electro's not suspecting, which is really a fun thing to do in this map. And Shardon has his depot up. This is more typical, getting it up at the 340 mark, probably getting... There we go, there's the depot. This depot is going. He has enough money to build up a couple Zion Pulsers, if he so chooses, which he probably will, and getting auto defense as well. So Shardon is... Interesting, he did it last game as well. I forgot to point that out, but he got auto defense. Kind of interesting that he's doing that so early, especially on a map like this, especially since he's fully aware that they are at cross positions. So he doesn't have to worry too much about an early rush, although he's not aware of what Electro is going for. Auto defense didn't really help him out last time. Anyway, that is what he's going for, and Electro, on the other hand, getting an early factory. No other early importers. He is going... Apparently playing for a relatively long game. He has actually not scouted out yet. Surprisingly enough, Electro has not sent out a Special Ops or Marine to scout, as far as I can tell. Double-checking further to the future. No, he has not. Shardon is checking through the future, and what, see what he has planned. He's got a depot up. It, when his, his depot is up, but he doesn't have anything but RPs. He's building a lot of economy, making sure he's getting as much as he can, which is a good idea. And the depot is not building any units, so he's clearly not too... Okay, evidently he is trying to use auto-defense in place of units in case of a rush. And it looks like Sharon also not realizing that he's not quite done scouting it, although he is fully aware of where Electro is. He's not fully aware of what Electro is playing, or what Electro is planning on doing with that. Early Lancer coming up, because Electro is fully aware that Sharon is playing Vekir, and Lancers are a perfect counter design pulse, or a near perfect counter design pulsers. The Zion Veer inside can hit them, but the Zion Pulsar can't, so that works. So neither player at this point has actually seen what the other is up to, what the other is building up. Electro hasn't seen that Sharadon is powering economy. Very, very hard powering economy. And Sharadon, on the other hand, has not seen that Electro is going for an early Lancer, but... Oh, now he's seen it! Okay, now he's fully scouted out. Although he has moved a Shinveer out of the way of that one base, so he can't easily set up a hidden base halfway through the game. And... At this point, he kind of knows what Electro's up to. He does see that Electro hasn't built a whole lot of economy, which is a little unusual. Apparently a Lancer rush is forthcoming. Which I don't really agree with, but admittedly, if the Teth Veer is here and not up in the base, it could work. I I could see how Lancer Rush could be useful if you go behind the base here, hit the economy. It's just that it's very easy for Vekir to then set up some anti-air, and then the Lancers are dead. Lancers really can't hit ground very hard, not until you get aerospace, and even then, Lancers are cheap, frail units that you need a lot of in order for them to be effective. See, so... 
a lot of their units are either really individually powerful, like Twin Mars and Heavy Tanks, or they're really frail but kind of cheap. They're cheap for their power, what they have, and so you just spam them, like Lancers and Frigates. So Electro is, at this point, getting his economy a bit further going. He is definitely powering Lancers. He wants to have all the Lancers in the world, while Sharon, on the other hand, certainly not disputing that. He can't have any more Lancers than Electro can. He is completely limited. He can only have zero or fewer. And Electro is switching over slightly to ATHC. It's not a terrible idea. It does require a bit of a broader defense on Sharadan's part. Though I'm still a little bit surprised that Electro is powering so hard into units. Admittedly, Sharadan is powering hard into economy, so Electro has actually quite a bit of a chance to attack, but... Apparently Sharadan actually has some technical issues at the moment. Along with the slight order issue, but yeah. Well, Sheridan has apparently lost the ability to see what's going on in the game. According to the chat, his monitor froze. Which explains why he's over in the, or the right side of the timeline. Okay, now Sheridan apparently is back in the game, seeing where Electro is, and knowing that Electro is doing what he's doing, is he going to change his economy plans? Is he going to make... Is he going to make more resource processors? And Desclada in the chat pointing out, Lancers are not... That He wouldn't say Lancers are cheap, and I'd say, yeah, they kind of are. I mean... They aren't the cheapest units in the game. Admittedly, 36 Q Plasma is a fair amount, but 18 Liquid Crystal is not. If you're powering Q Plasma, they're not especially expensive. You could easily get half a dozen or so. What resource Electro has where we're looking right now, which is actually where Electro is looking right now himself, he could build about. He could easily build half a dozen right now. Even when he was, he could easily build at least three or four. So. Given that Electro is powering QP, or getting a fair amount of Q Plasma, it's not terribly expensive for him, and he has... What is he planning on doing? I'm a bit surprised he hasn't built an armory for any tech right now. Okay, admittedly, he is further in the future, seeing what's going on. Scouting around with his Lancers near the present. Jumping back to the 452 mark, jumping back about three minutes, and... Getting his ATHCs up as well. Getting more... Okay, not focusing on Lancers anymore, focusing more on ATHCs, which are pretty much the opposite in terms of cost. They're about as expensive in LC as Lances are in QP and vice versa. Lances 1836 and ATHCs are 3716. Apparently Electro, and Electro's ratio right now does support ATHCs a bit better than it supports Lancers, but he could still be getting lots of Lancers. It looked like that's what he was going for, and Sharadan's still powering economy. He is not too concerned. Getting Teth Pulsers as well, just in case, for the Lancers. Getting in the way, and it looks like Electro might have messed something up again. Yeah, I'm not sure where he's going with this. Marines... Not building anything, not building any armories, not building any resource processors. I think that may be where he screwed up. And it might be why he's currently expressing anger, or at least releasing steam. While Shadow, on the other hand, is about three minutes up from where Electro is, but he's building himself up. He's got himself foundations, he's going to easily get himself a an aerial control center. Well, Slipgate actually- Oh, how did I miss this? Sheridan got gate tech, of course! How can I miss that? Sheridan's been left alone so long, you could easily get gate tech. Getting a Slipgate, gonna be attacking in right near the 6 minute mark, probably. Or 7 minute mark, actually, when the Slipgate's done. I don't see Electro having a chance against this. I'm not even sure what Electro's planning on doing. He is scouting around, trying to figure out what's going on, but it's 9 minutes into the game. I feel like some technical issues may have occurred for Electro, because he is not building all that much. And he now knows that Electro is well prepared for Lancers. Not necessarily aware that Slipgates are forthcoming, but he's definitely aware that his Lancers will not be able to do much at this point. While Sharadon, on the other hand, is building up. He has a Slipgate up, he has Slipgate Repel going, and he's just purely teleporting in, not even chronoporting in, just going for a straight teleport instead. Also kind of giving away the fact that he has a Slipgate. Not even using a chronoport, and Electro at the 7 minute mark, Three minutes down from there is not apparently prepared for this. Even if there was a Chrono Port, he is not especially ready. He does, however, have actually have it as an ATHC. He is building more and more ATHCs, so... Nah, that's still not quite enough. Design Pulsers will probably trade with the ATHCs at this point. But if it's a Chrono Port, then it's even going to be harder. So Shardon attacking the 10 minute mark, and... Actually, it looks like there might... 
be a bit of a chance if he just chronoport at the time he's planning he might have been planning on chronoporting from from the present. Double check at the present. Well, at this point it looks like No, even at this point it looks like there is still a bit of an advantage for Shardan. At any rate, Shardan has a much stronger economy. He can continue to rebuild against this. I mean he could keep just sending more and more units. In fact, I'm a bit surprised Shardan has not built up more units. He easily could, and he is actually doing so. Never mind, he is building more units, more Zion Pulsers and Teth Pulsers. Getting an Aerial Control Center as well, just for that extra push. And I guess that's, there's an explanation as to why he isn't Chronoport much. He doesn't have a whole lot of Q-Plasma with, with which to do it. He does have more Q-Plasma RPs on the way. He has four, or five of them, actually. But that's not nearly enough when it comes to Chronoporting. You would ideally, at this point, for that many units, need about eight to ten, I'd say. But he is, in fact, going for some Chronoporting. He is Chronoporting a couple of his units back. He does have the money to do that. Oh, no, not quite! Nope, he is just going for Pure Teleport instead. Doesn't quite have the money to support it, but he does have... He is able to get rid of the ATFCs. Oh, sorry, the Lancers first. The ATFCs will go down probably pretty shortly. Yeah, definitely pretty shortly. Attacking from both sides. Well done there, and Electro getting flanked very hard and able to take care of some of the Zion Pulses, but not enough. The numbers are just too much, and Electro, from his point of view, slightly further back, has built more units. This, this may play out differently. It probably will, actually. Those extra two Lancers will probably make all the difference. And, in fact, they are able to get rid of the Teth units before going down too much themselves. And Mech's coming in as well. Looks like a Macrofab is forthcoming, since there's no air units coming in yet. So Mech is coming in, and a Shard Shardon here has not actually... We'll see, has he... No, he's not used a Slipgate for anything yet. He could if he wanted to, but he isn't. Double check from his point of view once again. Well, he is paused, but he doesn't have the Q-Plasma to do it with. Actually, I think he might be trying to Chronoport, but not actually... Realizing he doesn't have the resources with which to do it. Oh, well, no matter. Let's see. Electro. Let's see what's going on from his point of view. And it looks like Shardin actually is building a foundation in advance of the attack that he sent in. But we'll see how that pans out. I think that foundation is near enough. That looks like it'll work out. Electro, however, is starting to get... He has machinery. He is able to build up tanks and tornadoes if he chooses. And that will help him out. That will actually push this game further into the late game. Though, admittedly, starting out with gate tech like this is very unusual. Yeah, foundation creep is coming in. I think Shardan... He is making the right choice in the foundations. That's giving him a lot of power, a lot that he can work with. But even then... No, actually, I think that's more than enough power. What I'm saying, even then. These foundations are... I think... Gonna win him the game. Let's see what Electro has planned. He has defense turrets of his own, so... This point, building fight on top of unit fight, and it looks like... Once again, Electro's actually starting to hold it up. I think with four foundations, they're not going to be easy. Electro can't easily build more units. He could build a Tornado right now, but that, that'd be hard to get up in time. He should build it sooner rather than later, though. But he is not. However, he does have less to deal with than he... Uh, even then, he's still got a lot to deal with. Design Pulsar is making short work of all these units, and the Teth Pulsar is distracting the ATCs well enough. Design Pulsar is essentially untouched. Defense are trying to do it he can, but it's not nearly enough. Not nearly enough firepower in time, and Importer is down. Electro cannot deal with this, and Shardan hasn't even chronoported yet. However, he could, actually. At this point, he could easily chronoport these units back, or two of these units back, at least. Not doing so, but basically, Shardan has taken this game, I'd say. Looks very convincing that Shardan has taken this game. Electro trying to fight back somewhat, but he has no importers. He has no reserves, and... The mech alone cannot fight this. The defense turret alone is doing a valiant job, but is not enough. It will go down. It's not hitting the Teth Pulsar fast enough compared to the Foundation's healing it. And that's going to be game two. Once Electro says GG and the game is officially over. That should be happening sooner rather than later, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely a weird one. I mean, starting with Gate Tech like that, that is just weird. Gate tech like that, I mean, the foundation creep is perfectly normal, but gate tech, six minutes into the game, that's definitely a sign that Shardan was not getting enough pressure put on him. I mean, Electro really could have put pressure on, too, just given how much how much economy was being powered into. And Electro... <laughs> Electro getting a little bit defensive in the chat. Yeah, I mean, CISO is definitely... CISO is different from Vekir. Wouldn't feel too bad about it. Like, it's a bit different, though it is 
definitely a good sign of why changing one species or going random in a tournament is a bad idea. Oh, I see. He pointed out. Okay. Electro had originally planned to go CISO and then species switch to Vekir. And then went for a Lancer Rush, and neither of them quite panned out. But, yeah, I I wouldn't recommend either, honestly. I mean, Species Switch is an okay strategy, but I'm not sure it really would have made a huge difference in terms of strategy for Sharadan between Vekir and CISO. Maybe between Grekum and CISO? No, not even Grekum and CISO. There's really not a whole lot. I mean, Grekum and CISO maybe, because Grekum, although admittedly across positions, it doesn't. Because Grekum, he might have built more infantry early on, expecting an Octo Rush. But, yeah, I would have just gone... I guess I wouldn't correct Vekir, never mind, because Electra should have been going for Vekir, since that, that is what he was playing. So, once again, random is typically a very difficult thing to pull off. For species switching in the middle of a tournament, very difficult to pull off. Ill-advised for a reason. So anyway, that little ace off out of the way. Are we going to move on to the next game? GG, okay. Electro throws out his GG. That is going to be game. So we are on to game three. What? Wait, what? I... Oh, whoops. I mismarked which player won. Yeah, I apologize about that. Sharon did not quite win the whole tournament yet. We'll just fix that up. So anyway, stay tuned. And I'll have the third game shortly. Electro did not just lose 2-0. I've got mixed up about who is in what seat. So... Stay tuned. We'll be back shortly with the next game. Welcome back, Agron fans, to Game 3 of Electro vs. Shardon in the Losers Round 1 tournament bracket. And I apologize that last game I had the results slightly mixed up that Shardon did not win Game 1. Electro won Game 1. Shardon won Game 2. We are on to Game 3. And that game is going to be on Rooftop Showdown. And we shall begin. Electro starting out on the east side of the map. Shardan starting out on the west side of the map. And Electro probably will go for Vekir again. Or, yeah, Electro probably will go for Vekir again. Shardan will almost definitely go for Vekir again. But Electro did try Cecil last time. It didn't quite work out. And he is going for straight Vekir. While Shardan, on the other hand, is going for... What's he going for? He's going for Vekir. Of course he's going for Vekir. Why should I even ask? So it looks like Shardan is... Well, not doing anything out of the ordinary, getting himself set up account economically. Electro, on the other hand, is not quite planning out his opening yet. Sending out some scouting units, and his Zion Veer not quite moving in to build any RPs quite yet, but it is now. So that is underway, and Shard, on the other hand, is apparently completely broke. Oh yeah, he actually is. He, he did a very quick conversion of Q-Plasma to Liquid Crystal to get a faster Liquid Crystal resource processor. A bit of a risky strategy on this map, and a map this small, too. Powering economy like that, I kind of see why he did it, because it gets him that RP that much faster. But at the same time, that does mean it gets him vehicles that much slower. Because that 40 QP can't be used for the depot, he needs to re-mine 40 QP in order to actually get the depot in the first place. A little bit risky. Kind of relying on infantry to carry the brunt of the burden for him right now. And speaking of infantry, the scouting is going on. Electro scouts look like they are going to be torn apart, but we'll see. Looks like Shinveer versus Tethveer. I think the Tethveer is actually going to lose. Yep, the Shinveer has an advantage for damage, and it is winning that fight. So Electro scouts are going to get through. Shardan looks like he might be changing this up a bit, trying to change his tactics a bit to get around this. Little art to actually be sure who's going to win these these little infantry skirmishes, though. It's difficult to really micromanage it, but it looks like the Shinveer trying to get out of the way since it does have more power. Shinveer against Shinveer, and Electros has won because Electros did get the first hit in. There's really nothing that can be done about that. Electro still wins by scouting, but by a very small margin this time. It, instead of having basically a full health Shinveer, he has a nine health Shinveer. One shot to death kind of thing. And Electro going for fairly quick Foundation, possibly Depot, probably Depot. We'll see when he gets his Q Plasma RPs. Shard, on the other hand, going for more resource processors. And let's see here. The resource processors are... Yeah, they're doing okay. I mean, he's going for a typical 6 RP opening. Though, like I said, a little bit atypical that he did convert Q Plasma to Liquid Crystal right at the start. And Electro getting an early Depot up, which is pretty much going to capitalize on Sharadon's slowing down his production for his economy's sake. 
Now, like I said, economy definitely getting pretty strong pretty quickly. I just don't know how much stronger it's getting. It's hard to compare since Electro is not focusing on his, on his economy. There's no direct comparison here. Electro is focusing once again on a Zion Pulsar Rush as he did in Game 1. And once again, this Shinveer is still winning, so... Electro Scouts are still going to be coming in. They still will see what Shardan's up to, and the Shardan is basically powering economy once again. However, Shardan has moved over to Q-Plasma. He is going to start to get Q-Plasma for his depot. He is getting the foundation for it, and the Zion Veer will defend that Shin that Shin is dead. The Zion Veer will kill it. No question about that. And at the same time, Electro at the 153 mark is setting up his depot. Now, Shardan, on the other hand, actually... Oh, it looks like... Looks like fortunes have changed. Shardan, apparently his scout forces have managed to get through, and now are retreating. So, never mind. His scout forces are completely retreating, and are completely irrelevant to the discussion anymore. That's rather unfortunate for them, I suppose. So, with that... I think Shardan is going to... He is going to see further than present that there is a depot rush coming in. So, Shardan, well aware of the depot rush coming in. Yeah, it looks like he... Shardan got lucky in one of the iterations. Electro actually bypassing this entirely. So Electro's scout forces are going to get in. Shardan's scout forces are going to fight near Shardan's base. And it looks like once again... Actually, looks like Electro has once again won out in terms of timing. That his Tethvir stayed alive just a little bit longer. So Shinvir is going to stay alive, admittedly, with only 9 health. But still, looks like Sh Electro... I don't know if he's trying to fix that up or what, but it looks like he might be. Definitely pause at this point. No real benefit I can see to that. Because he has won that fight. He is not getting anything up here. He's not building up any more RPs at this point. He is jumping back to the 153 mark and doesn't have his depot up quite yet. Looks like that's going to be up around the 2 minute mark. Shardan, on the other hand, at the 2 minute mark is retreating his scouts once again further into his base. Probably going to get Zion Veer support on this one. Possibly foundation support, actually. His foundation, he could very quickly afford a foundation, but I think he's still going with his early resource processors. Now, Electro, at the three-minute mark, still does not have Zion Pulsars. He's not got the Q-Plasma for it. Moved a lot of the RPs onto Liquid Crystal. He has enough Q-Plasma for one Zion Pulsar now, but I think he's going to probably want to put two Q-Plasma RPs, or two RPs onto Q-Plasma. And Shard, on the other hand, He's actually managing to take advantage of his economy now. He is getting his economy built up. He doesn't have as much Q Plasma RPs as he probably should, but he still has his economy being built up. Electro at 315 mark does have one Zion Pulsar getting a second. Looks like he's going to wait to get Skip Teleport on them as well, but we'll see. He doesn't have any Q Plasma RPs to actually afford Skip Teleport with. So he might just be going for a straight attack. Now Shard, on the other hand, is just having a foundation. No depot, just a foundation for defense, just in case Electro decides to attack, which of course Electro will. And Electro, on the other hand, apparently waiting. Not sure if he's waiting on Skip Teleport, because I'm guessing that's what he's waiting on. It'll be about, I'd say, a minute before he fully gets Skip Teleport. He should probably, like I said, once again, move two of his RPs over to Q Plasma, or just build a couple Q Plasma RPs, really. For the amount of money he has, it's worth it at this point. But now he has the money. He could afford Skip Teleport. The four-minute mark, however. And his scout forces at the same time are coming into attack and harass a bit from the back. Now, Shardan fully aware of this. He is sending back his own scout forces to deal with this. And Electro slowing down Shardan's economy a bit. And Shardan actually, at this point, doesn't have a particularly strong economy. His... Well, okay, he doesn't have a whole lot of money in the bank, I should say. Not He doesn't have a weak economy. He doesn't have a whole lot of money in the bank. That's the thing. But he does have a lot of RPs to the south. He has a lot of RPs in his main base. He just has a lot of economy. He has a very strong economy. What I meant was... Getting harassed at that exact moment is actually going to work for Electro. But Electro is not attacking. He's not skip teleporting. He's not focusing on his main base at all. He's focusing entirely on this harassment. And these Zion Pulsars could get skip teleport and they could rush in to assist to basically completely punish Shardan for his reckless expansionism. And there we go. Skip teleport being researched, but still 430 mark. It's going to be cutting it close. And the third Zion Pulsar could get skip teleport right now. And is it going to do so? Yes, it is going to do so. But they aren't hierarchies. That's going to be a lot of chrono that's needed. It won't be until about the 530 mark before Electro actually comes back here. And it looks like Electro is going to manage to hold off these units for a little bit longer. He can keep himself in a good position for this. But Shardan, really just a question of when he decides to attack. But getting a depot very quickly, the Zion Veer is not moving up to defend. It is just building more and more resource processors in the depot up here. That is going to be more interesting. Electro, on the other hand, 
See, Electro has... Well, he's built himself up a bit more. He has his Zion Pulsars going. But he doesn't have them attacking yet. He has no core energy with which to attack. And his Shinveer is going to die. It cannot fight the other Shinveer fast enough. Looks like he's trying to get into a harassment position, but it's not going to work. Electro, I don't know what he's focused on. He can send these Zion Pulsars in right now, and that's the only time it's going to be effective. At this point, Sharon does not have any Zion Pulsars. Like, Electro could just send them in pretty much now. I don't know why he's not doing so. Like now. Now he has a corner with which to do so. He could do it. Shardon, on the other hand, at the 630 mark, he is building Zion Pulsars very quickly. The window is very nearly closed. Electro, he can actually jump back and now send these Zion Pulsars in, or very close to. I'm not sure if he's planning on doing that. I think he is planning on doing that. But no, he's getting more Zion Veers. He's getting more vehicles. He is not... I shouldn't get too angry. He is not rushing. I shouldn't get angry about that. Why am I getting angry? I'm not angry. I am concerned because Electro has these Zion Pulsars and they could rush and the window for rushing has closed because these Zion Pulsars from Shardan are going to close that window pretty convincingly. But it looks like Electro now finally skipped teleporting at the 642 mark. A little late, but it might actually work out. These there's only It's three on three. It's kind of a matter of positioning at this point. He could build more Zion Pulsars and send them in as well, but he's not doing so. Not... He has the units right here. He can just go right here and go to making a Pulsar with all these units. He could afford that, but he is not doing so. And it looks like he's not actually sending these units directly into attack either. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't hierarchied them for that matter. Because he's burning a lot of Chrono Energy in order to actually command these units. And that's all he really has for him. I mean, he's using a lot of Chrono Energy for this purpose. And Shardan, on the other hand... Shardan has... Almost a dozen Zion Pulsars. He has 11, sorry, he has 9 Zion Pulsars and 2 Teth Pulsars. Walking right, or driving right into Electro's base at the 840 mark. While Electro, on the other hand, at the 714 mark, has not yet sent his Zion Pulsars into attack. I don't know what he is doing. I really don't. I, I'm actually kind of curious if this replay is accurate. Because I would expect that stuff would have happened. That Chardon would have... Taking a lot of damage by now. But no, Shardan is... He's attacking... Sending in an ever larger force. Like I said, he had a powerful economy going in. His economy is really paying off right now. Electro never really per properly punished it. And now that that window has long since been closed. This is just bizarre. It looks like Electro... Well, if he had expanded down to the south, it would be gone. But now his main base getting destroyed, and Electro has moved in at the Unplayable Past Edge at the 8.14 mark or so, or the 8-minute mark or so, is attacking Shardan, but Shardan, once again, has so many units that it doesn't even matter. He is sending back some of them to eliminate Electro's attack force. I'm not sure if Electro quite realized how much he could have punished Shardan throughout this entire game. But this is the thing, Shardan had, it was about 5 minutes where Electro could have just completely teleported in and wiped Shardan off the face of the map and won the game and won this match. But at this point, it looks like he's going to turn around entirely. Electro has no economy. He has some Zion Turtures being built, which is not bad, but he has no economy. He's got nothing to support this. In fact, I'm a bit surprised he has no economy. I'm a bit surprised that no further RPs have been built. He has 346 li Liquid Crystal. He could easily afford a Zion Veer and then more RPs. So I'm really not sure what is going on. Now, Shardon, on the other hand, Shardon has, as you can see, a lot of vehicles. It's hard to even count them at this point. It looks like 13 Zion Pulsars, two, Z two Teth Pulsars, no, four Teth Pulsars. Oh, what is the command for this? Four Teth Pulsars is correct. And actually even more Zion Pulsars now. It's I can't even count at this point how many Zion Pulsars there are. Well, I can. It's 14. But I soon won't be able to easily because it won't fit on one of those little pages of Zion Pulsars. And Shardan coming in. The first attack coming in here and... It'll just destroy Electro. I don't know what chance Electro could possibly have. His Zion Turcher will operate as a bit of a useful diversion, but at this point, one Zion Turcher is not enough. I... Yeah, it's not enough at all. The depot is going down way too fast, and Zion Turcher, yeah, it's not taking a whole lot of damage, but really, enough Zion Pulsars. With the damage reduction, it does not matter. The damage reduction does not matter at all, and Shardon 
He actually has more Zion Pulses to deal with than he did previously. Electro is pumping them out somewhat. Getting more foundations as well to try to keep them going, keep them alive. Now, three Zion Turtures, not bad, but still against 14, actually, possibly 16 by now, Zion Pulsers. Against this large number of units that Charadon has powered up, or powered into. He hasn't powered them up. There's no way of powering up units in Akron. But he has powered into them. His economy has allowed him to get that, and admittedly, he is playing on home turf. Even with the Zion Pulsers coming in, the healing and the damage reduction is making a difference. That being said, an aerial control center is almost inevitable. In fact, gate tech is almost inevitable at this point. Although Shardan is going for the aerial control center instead. Not pushing for gate tech once again as he did in game two. But he does have aerial control center. And he's going to likely get some air units and just finish these guys. Finish these Zion Turtles off. And even then, the splash damage of the Zion Pulsers is destroying the Annex and the Depot. Faster than the Zion Turtles can. The Annex is actually getting healed up. Almost survives, but not quite. The foundations were helping out, but even with that, it's not enough. However, Electro is slowly but surely winning this Battle of Attrition. These three Zion Pulsers should move forward. However, they could probably possibly turn the tide. Could possibly kill the Zion Turtles fast enough. But yeah, everything that Chardon has will help. But at the same time, Chardon has so much economy going at this point. And now getting Shin Turtles, now he's going to basically turn this around. Shin Turtles will take care of the Zion Turtles without issue. And Chardon once again suspects that Electro has expanded, which of course he has not, but... It really doesn't matter. Looks like the only thing the Electro has going for him is the fact that Zion Turchers take so little damage from Shin Turchers. Sorry, from Zion Pulsers. But the Shin Turchers, not so much. The Shin Turchers can deal full damage with Zion Turchers. And that will cause him to go down. I think Electro is going to start Depot Heal microing them, jumping them back in the Depot to heal up. Although, admittedly, the best thing that Shardan could really do at this point is tell all the Zion Pulsers to focus fire on the foundations one at a time. Gets rid of the foundations, that'll get rid of most of the healing. That or just focus fire on... No, focus on the foundations. The depot can go afterwards. Get rid of the foundations, then get rid of the depot, and then get rid of the Zion Turchers. Because focusing on the Zion Turchers is not going to help, and I don't know if Shardan is aware of that or planning on doing that. It looks like he does have some of his Zion Pulsers focusing on the depot, and that is working. They can deal with it fast enough that the foundations cannot help. And now the depot is gone. No depot heal micro for Electro, and the foundations will go soon after. So he is aware of this. He is quite savvy about getting rid of the foundations and with that Electro's hopes of getting through the loser's bracket go out the window I'm afraid the Electro has lost this game Shardan has won it's just a matter of typing GG and that is it Shardan pumping in more Shin Turches as well and Electro that is game the Electro at is a little bit further back, but we see that he has lost his entire base. He does have a last Zion Turcher trying to attack, trying to get rid of what he can from Shardan's base, but it doesn't even matter. At this point, Shardan's main is not even important. He's teleported everything away, and the Shin Turcher getting rid of the Zion Turcher, or trying to, and doesn't really matter at this point. Zion Turcher not doing much, and Electro... Electro has basically lost. The Zion Turcher here... Moving north, not able to really do anything, cannot heal up, can't really attack. Could harass this area to the north a bit, but Electro's lost at this point. But I'm going to speed this up just a bit because there's really not much point. And there we go, that is it, that is game. Electro has thrown in the towel, and that is game and match. That is the series. Hope you enjoyed that. Weird though it was at many points. I still hope you enjoyed it, and I will have Haiku versus Shadow Fury coming up next. Stay tuned for that, as I once again try bizarrely to speak of myself in the third person.